My wife told me I've grown as a person. Her actual word were you've gotten fat, but I know what she meant. Today, I'm going to recap a 1995 action crime film called Heat. The movie begins with a train that arrives at the station, and professional thief Neil McCauley emerges disguised as a paramedic. He enters a local hospital where his attire allows him to go unnoticed in the emergency area. He observes the activity around him as he walks down the hallway, pretending to be an ordinary employee as he rides away in a good hue ambulance. One of Neil's associates, Chris, purchases some explosive charges from a building materials supplier. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Vincent Hanna, who is in charge of robbery and homicide, says goodbye to his family and goes to work. Later, Neil, Chris, and three other guys, Trejo, Wingro, and Michael, rob an armored truck from Gage. Wearing paramedic outfits, Neil and Chris position the stolen ambulance on Venice Boulevard. At that moment, Michael picks Wangro up at a bar in a stolen green tow truck. They then park the truck under the highway. Trejo follows the armored truck as it pulls away from the depot, radioing its location as it approaches. Later, they cover their faces with masks and maneuver their cars into position. As Michael approaches with the tow truck, Neil begins to execute a maneuver to block the approaching armored truck. The armored truck stops, blocked by Neil. The two guards in the back read the newspapers, completely unaware of what was about to happen. Next, the tow truck rear-ends the armored truck at full speed, and it overturns. The thieves get out of their vehicles, armed with assault weapons and guns. Trejo broadcasts to the others that they have three minutes, and Neil starts a timer. Chris detonates an explosive charge to blow out the back doors. Neil and Michael get into the armored car, pull out the guards, and hand them over to Wangro, who holds them off with a gun. Trejo deploys a spiked strip to stop police officers, and Chris examines the truck. When Neil shouts that he has only 80 seconds left, Wangro becomes enraged and pistol whips the first guard. Chris comes out of the back of the truck after finding the envelope they were looking for, and the boys start to return to the ambulance. Wangro shoots the first guard in the face, while Neil shoots the second. Michael points his gun at the last guard and nods to Neil, after which he shoots him twice in the chest. They rush back to the ambulance. Neil is furious with Wayne Gro for shooting the guard. As the crew drives away from the area, the first police cars arrive from the opposite direction. When the cops fail to notice the spike strip in time, their tires blow out and they collide. As more police arrive, Neil and his team get out of the ambulance and get into a nearby station wagon. Chris places a bomb in the ambulance, destroying weapons and other evidence. That evening, Neil meets Nate, his money laundering expert. Nate informs him that the envelope they stole includes $1.6 million in bearer bonds from an investment company run by a shady businessman named Roger. Nate agrees to arrange a meeting during which Roger will send someone to exchange the bonds for cash. He informs Neil of another job opportunity offered by a man named Kelso, who will pay at least $10 million. Elsewhere, Hannah and other detectives arrive at the scene of the theft and begin investigating. Hannah is able to give a fairly accurate account of the robbery, noting that the people who perpetrated it are unquestionably experienced. He orders his team to begin talking to their informants and fences in an attempt to determine who is handling the money. Later, the rest of the gang and Wangro wait for Neil at a diner in another part of town. Neil beats Wangro up in front of the other diners. He is worried, because the death of the three guards will require a more thorough investigation by the police. As everyone leaves, he hits Wangro and throws him to the ground, intending to kill him. As he is about to shoot Wangro, he notices a police cruiser and stops. The police car drives away. When he turns around, Wangro has already disappeared. They search the area, but find no trace of him. At home, Chris has a heated argument with his wife Charlene about the amount of money he brought home after the robbery. It is far less than she expected. The next morning, Hannah and Drucker raid the chop shop of Albert Torina, one of Hannah's informants. After a tense conversation, in which Hannah threatens Albert with jail time, he informs Hannah that his brother Richard will meet Neil at a Koreatown bar at 2 a.m. with a possible lead in the case. 
Kelso, Nate's associate, meets with Neil. Kelso informs Neil of a new possible robbery, a bank. On some days of the week, the bank holds at least $10 million. However, Neil initially dismisses the idea. Kelso tells him that he knows how to rig the alarm system so that it goes off 15 minutes before they arrive. So Neil accepts the assignment, and Nate provides Roger's phone number. Chris is sleeping on the living room floor when Neil returns to his apartment. He informs Chris that they will recover the money from Roger for the bonds they stole and then take over Kelso's banking position. Subsequently, he arranges the transfer of the bonds. A few days later, he calls Roger and asks him to set up a meeting to exchange the bearer bonds for cash. He is informed that the meeting will be held tomorrow at a drive-in movie theater. Meanwhile, Neil discovers that Charlene is in a hotel with another man, Alan Marciano. He approaches Charlene, warning her to give Chris another chance. Hannah visits a bar and talks to Richard, who informs him about Michael, the guy who pulls off big robberies. Elsewhere, Neil contacts his team and orders surveillance of everyone Michael hangs out with. He goes to the drive-in movie theater, where Roger has arranged the exchange. Soon, the delivery man arrives in a pickup truck. Before tossing the package into Neil's shotgun seat, Neil urges the driver to keep his hands up. Unbeknownst to him, an assassin armed with a machine gun is waiting for him in the back of the pickup. Chris, armed and lurking on the roof of the projection building, spots the assassin and warns Neil. Neil notices the assassin and immediately engages reverse, slamming the assassin into the pickup truck. Chris turns, takes aim, and shoots the pickup. The assassin fires a reckless volley at Neil's car. Neil runs over the shooter with his car after Chris shoots him from behind. Michael notices the driver about to reach the exit and shoots him. Neil checks the package and discovers only waste paper. He calls Roger and threatens to kill him. Neil, Chris, and Michael do not know that Wayne Grow started working for Roger at that time. They are also unaware that Wayne Grow is a serial killer who preys on young call girls. Later, Hannah is summoned to a motel where one of Wayne Grow's victims was discovered, stuffed into a garbage can. Meanwhile, Neil and his men carry out another robbery of a precious metals vault. Michael disables the alarm system and Chris begins to break into a safe, while Neil remains on guard at the front. Hannah and his detectives and a SWAT team watch the situation from across the street. One of the SWAT team members sits down and slams his gun against the wall of the truck. Neil, who is standing outside, hears the noise. He realizes that they are being watched and tells Chris and Michael to leave. The three leave empty-handed and Hannah orders the team to release the gang as he knows that simple trespassing carries a lighter sentence than actual theft. Soon, Hannah and his team notice Neil and the others presumably looking for another job. When Neil and his crew leave, Hannah and his men rush to the scene to figure out what the next theft will be. He realizes that Neil's inspection of the area was a deception to lure himself and his team out into the open. Meanwhile, Neil photographs the investigators and thanks to Nate, he is able to identify Hannah and his men. When Neil meets with Nate to pick up the plans for the Kelso Bank robbery, Nate tells him about Hannah, who has a long record of success in apprehending major criminals. However, Neil decides that the risk is still worth it for the heist. On a Los Angeles street, Hannah decides to join a surveillance team chasing Neil. Later, he pulls Neil over for what appears to be a minor traffic violation. He cordially invites Neil to join him at a nearby restaurant. They discuss their dedication to their respective jobs and the limitations of their personal lives. Hannah describes his failing marriage, and Neil confides that he is similarly isolated. Though they admit their respect for one another, both acknowledge that they will kill the other if necessary. Meanwhile, Wingro is silently thwarting the thieves' plans for the bank heist behind the scenes. He meets Roger and says he has something useful for them. Neil's man, Trejo, calls him and informs him that the police are looking for him. Neil teaches him how to confuse the cops and escape. At a diner, Neil notices an old friend, Donald, an ex-convict. He approaches Donald and offers him the job of driver for the robbery as Trejo's last-minute replacement and Donald accepts. 
Trejo is forced to betray Neil after his wife is attacked by Roger's men. Hugh Benny, one of Roger's colleagues, informs the police which bank Neil intends to hit. Neil enters the bank with Michael and Chris. Chris deposits a briefcase at the teller's counter, then turns around and knocks a guard to the ground. Neil and Michael order everyone present to lie down and disarm the other guards. Neil punches the bank manager in the face, steals his vault key, and hands it to Chris, who opens the vault's double doors, unloads a set of empty gym bags, and begins putting money into them. He prepares to load three bags, each containing four million dollars. Neil passes a bag to Michael in the lobby, who then heads for the exit. Meanwhile, a detective receives a phone call from Hugh Benny, informing him about the robbery. Subsequently, the detectives, along with Hannah, rush to the bank. When they arrive, Neil and his gang have already started to leave the bank. Michael reaches the getaway car, where Donald is waiting for him. Chris is the last person to arrive after Neil crosses the square and gets into the passenger seat. As Chris approaches the car, he notices gunmen standing across the street. He shoots them, and as passersby flee for cover, Hannah and Bosco begin firing at him from the sidewalk. He turns and fires at them. Despite wearing a bulletproof vest, Bosco keels over and is killed. Chris then enters the car, while Hannah checks Bosco's pulse. Michael shoots at Drucker and Castles through the side window after they emerge from hiding. Drucker rushes to the street corner and shoots one wheel of the fleeing car. Drucker and Castles manage to kill Donald, and the fleeing car collides with an abandoned vehicle. Neil, Chris, and Michael get out of the car as police officers behind the barricade open fire. They return fire as they advance down the road. Michael then separates from Neil and Chris. Chris is the first to arrive at the checkpoint, but is shot in the shoulder by a detective. Neil loads him onto his shoulder and carries him into the parking lot. In the process, two officers pop up around the corner, and Neil opens fire at them. Then Hannah arrives, and Neil starts firing at him but misses. He loads Chris into the back seat of a car and drives away. Also, Michael is chased by Drucker and Castles. A girl is left behind as bystanders evacuate a nearby square. Michael trips over a water fountain, gets up and takes the girl as a human shield. He fires at Drucker and Castles. Hannah positions himself behind Michael and shoots him dead. Hannah grabs the girl and drags her away while the officers approach Michael. Back to Neil, who takes Chris to Bob, a cooperating doctor who treats the wound. Later, Neil goes to Trejo's house, with the intention of killing him because he betrayed him, but he arrives too late. Trejo is brutally beaten and dying. In his last moments, he informs Neil that Wayne Grow and Roger are to blame. Neil goes to Roger's house and throws a chair through the window. He then kills Roger without hesitation. Meanwhile, Charlene is taken to a safe place by the police. Sergeant Drucker informs her that if she refuses to turn her husband over to the police, she will be charged as an accomplice. Eventually, Chris appears with a new hairstyle as a disguise. Despite their marital problems, his wife alerts him of the police, and he escapes. Neil asks his new girlfriend, Edie, to accompany him leaving the country. Nate planned to flee to New Zealand. After receiving a tip from Nate about Wingro's whereabouts, Neil makes the rash decision to kill him in his hotel room, abandoning his usual caution to seek revenge. He breaks in, executes Wingro, and then escapes. After beating Q Benny to get more information, Hannah finds out where Wangro resides and asks one of his investigators to go there. He notices from a distance that Edie is waiting quietly in Neil's car. He becomes suspicious and approaches Edie. Neil exits the building and starts walking toward his car, only to find that Hannah has seen him, who starts to head towards him. Neil climbs over the perimeter fence of the airport and heads toward the cargo terminal. Hannah follows him a short distance away, and the two exchange a few gunshots, before Neil flees. Hannah follows him, and the two engage in a tense game of cat and mouse in the dark. Soon, as Neil comes out to shoot, Hannah notices Neil's shadow and shoots first. Hannah shoots him several times in the chest, and reaches out and takes his hand, knowing that he has more in common with Neil than with anyone else in his life. 
Before Neil dies, the two men spend one last contemplative moment together. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.